When somebody is sick, you don't need to say, God, come. When you come, God has come. That's why when Jesus sent us, he didn't say, go and say, God, come and help. He said, you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. When you lay your hands, God lays his hands. You are God's system. You are God's strategy. You are God's tool of intervention. And so what God planned for us is not to be intervened. If God is intervening every day, the earth will lose the ability to exist according to plan. And the will of man will become useless. The reason God gave us a will is so that we can rule this earth on his behalf. But if God has to intervene with his sovereignty all the time, a point will come. Even our existence will be useless. So God intervenes because his love compels him. But the original plan is for you and I to be the intervention. So when somebody is dying, they invite you, you come. You say, death, I rebuke you. Go back. And death has enough intelligence to know that you are God's representative. When somebody is sick, they invite you, you come. You say, in the name of Jesus, I break this siege. It goes back. When somebody is frustrated, they invite you, you come. You say, I break the embargo. Be free. And one week, two weeks later, the person begins to prosper. When they ask you, who are you? You say, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am here to represent Jesus. It's not about who I am. It's the one I represent. That's how God planned it. Imagine if a president sends you to represent him. And you come for that meeting. Everything you are supposed to do, you now call the president. Uh, please talk to them. Uh -uh, why did you go there? If I have to talk to them, why did I send you? I sent you there so that when you talk, the president talks. When you rise, the president rises. You are my representative there. So God's original plan is not to be coming into it all the time. It's our inability to express his will that makes him intervene because his love won't let him. A generation must rise to maturity where we know that if we are there, God is there. And anything God would have done if he was there in person because he has sent us there, that thing will happen. The moment you have that understanding, your life will change. You must understand God's intentions towards men. If you don't understand his intentions, you will not have the best of him. God's intentions are not to intervene in our circumstances. That's far from it. God intervenes in our circumstances because we are still growing. God's intention is actually for us to walk in dominion, to represent him. The man who is receiving healing is knowing God at a level, but that's not God's plan. God's plan is for him to become God's instrument of healing. The man who is receiving prosperity knows God as at a low realm. God's plan is for you to become the symbol of his financial and economic power. The symbol of his prosperity. God wants you to represent him. So that when people want to see the excellency of health, they will look at you. That at 100 years, you are still walking and you don't need an eyeglass. And then they say, which exercise, which food do you eat? You say, yes, I exercise, I eat well, but this is not exercise, this is power. When people look at you, anything you want, you have. And then they are asking you, what are you doing to prosper so much? You say, no, it's a power. God is at work in me. He's using you as a sign. So you are the one who proves God's faithfulness. You are the one who proves God's power. You are the one who proves God's mercy. So when people want to know God, they look at you. God's plan is not to intervene in your life. It's to make you the tool of intervention. Let me show you two scriptures as I run. Number one, Psalm 115 verse 16. It said the heavens belong to God. He said, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. God didn't plan to be intervening in the earth from time to time. The reason God is intervening is because men have not grown. When men grow and become princes, God will intervene. Everything God wants to do, we represent him. That's the sign that we have fulfilled God's intention. That's why when he created man in Genesis 1.28, he said, let them have dominion. I want them to rule the earth on my behalf. When somebody is sick, you don't need to say, God, come. When you come, God has come. That's why when Jesus sent us, he didn't say, go and say, God, come and help. He said, you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. When you lay your hands, God lays his hands. You are God's system. You are God's strategy. You are God's tool of intervention. And so what God planned for us is not to be intervened. If God is intervening every day, the earth will lose 
the ability to exist according to plan and the will of man will become useless the reason God gave us a will is so that we can rule this earth on his behalf but if God has to intervene with his sovereignty all the time a point will come even our existence will be useless so God intervenes because his love compels him but the original plan is for you and I to be the intervention so when somebody is dying they invite you you come you say death I rebuke you go back and death has enough intelligence to know that you are God's representative when somebody is sick they invite you you come you say in the name of Jesus I break this siege it goes back when somebody is frustrated they invite you you come you say I break the embargo be free and one week two weeks later the person begins to prosper when they ask you who are you you say I am what I am by the grace of God I am here to represent Jesus it's not about who I am it's the one I represent that's how God planned it imagine if a president sends you to represent him and you come for that meeting everything you are supposed to do you now call the president uh, please talk to them uh -uh, why did you go there if I have to talk to them why did I send you I sent you there so that when you talk the president talks when you rise the president rises you are my representative there so God's original plan is not to be coming into it all the time is our inability to express his will that makes him intervene because his love won't let him a generation must rise to maturity where we know that if we are there God is there and anything God would have done if he was there in person because he has sent us there that thing will happen the moment you have that understanding your life will change anywhere you go to you say God is here and they ask you where is he you say I came with him at first they would think you are proud but when they see the manifestations they will advise themselves you know what the Bible said he said, if they hear you, they hear me. That's what the Bible said. I think that's Luke 10, 16. He said, if they hear you, they hear me. Anything you say, that's my mind. He said, we have the mind of Christ, so we judge all things. We represent God in his fullness on the earth. That's why we are called the body of Christ. He became one with us so that we can represent him. So, if God is healing you now, thank him for it. But knows that his plan is beyond healing. He wants you to become a system of divine health. So much so that wherever you stand, you communicate healing. If God is intervening in your finances, thank him for it. But know that he wants you to be a system of prosperity. Did you read the life of Abraham? One man at that era had over 318 servants. Not to talk about bonafide members of his family. 318. The guy's house was literally a city. And there was no place where Abraham was begging, Lord, please feed me. No, he knew who he was. If Abraham enters your nation, you are blessed. Even in few occasions where Abraham was afraid, God was fighting on his behalf. He was entering Egypt and he told the wife, if you go there, don't tell the king you are my wife. Oh, tell him you are my sister. I don't want them to kill me. Because he too was learning to understand what he represents. He doesn't know that when he enters Egypt, God has entered. He was still learning. And when he went, he lied to the king that this is my sister. Well, not lie per se because she's his niece and the king hijacked the lady that night God came to him and said how dare you you took his wife Do, don't you know who he is the king who is he he said all oh, your family now everybody is barren already because of this thing you have done there is judgment on your house because you touch his wife even the animals are already barren now he needs to pray for you <laughs> the next day King came to Abraham. Abraham was shaking. Oh, what happened again? Well, meanwhile, Abraham would be praying. Please, let him not touch my wife. He didn't know who he was. When the king came, he was shaking. The king now said, I'm so sorry. You would have told me that she's your wife. Why did you hide this thing from me? Please pray for me. That was when Abraham now put himself together. Uh, what's going on here? Ah, uh, well, uh, you know, I represent the most high God. <laughs> Somebody shout! Abraham, no? And do you know the same thing happened to Isaac? Both of them met Abimelech. I don't know why the pattern was repeated. And Isaac too didn't know. After it happened, you know? Yes, you know, um, that's how God works. Um, <laughs> I'm, a prophet. I'm a prophet of God. Uh, your voice now has baritone. But if you know, 
You don't need anything to happen. When you enter the nation, you come like one sent of God. If you know, you don't need an encounter. You don't need anybody to validate you. The scripture has already validated you. Because people don't know God's plan. That's why in our generation, everybody is looking for somebody to speak good of them. Today, people pay money for somebody to talk about them. Today, people lobby to be in people's birthday just to stand so that they will know they know them. Oh God, stop that thing. You are too important. You are God's strategy for a generation. When you go for a birthday, go because you want to celebrate a friend. Nobody has the power to add value to your life. He said you were carefully and wonderfully made. Honor men for their sacrifices. Honor men for what they represent. But never bring yourself low to think that it's another man's life that will give your own life a meaning. The Bible said a man in honor that knoweth not. It's like the beast of the field that perishes. The reason most of us are perishing is because we don't know who we are. Wake up and understand you represent God. You are an ambassador of another dispensation. You are a representative of a spirit that is a monarch eternally. You are God's agency on the earth realm. Walk with understanding. You are God's agent. You are God's strategy. You are God's plan. Don't be arrogant, but know who you are. Don't be intimidated by anybody. Listen, there are places today where they make men, they make men less of themselves. In fact, they treat them like slaves. Come out of that bondage. The Bible said, as he is, so are you in this world. And you are not just as he is for being like him so that he can send you to represent him. When Paul understood this, in, Act, in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he said, be ye followers of me as I'm the follower of Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. If you have seen me, you have seen Christ. If you have met me, you have met Christ. That was the consciousness he had. No wonder God did extraordinary things with him. The Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. They were casting out devils. They were healing the sick. It's not a mantle. It's a revelation. It's not a mantle. It has nothing to do with the mantle of Paul. It has everything to do with Paul's understanding of who he is. This is not to teach you arrogance. Please hear me and hear me well. Honor those who deserve honor, but don't dishonor yourself in a bid to honor others. Ask my leaders here. I call them sirs. We play administratively. I'm leading this clan, but they are equally important. They are all representatives of God, they are agents of God on the earth realm. Too many people can't manifest God because in their minds they have become slaves. Today, tell somebody to do something that he wants to die. Is it me like this? Oh, how? No, stop those things. It's religion. I appreciate God for the opportunity, but please, you are not a slave. Jesus died for you and he commissioned you to represent him because that was God's original plan. He wanted you to represent him in your own sphere of influence. Have that understanding. Hello, thanks for watching.